Hi, thanks for joining us. We have a quadratic, quadratic expressions and algebraic fractions video, this time looking at factorizing non-monic quadratic trinomials. There's another video that you should have watched uh, earlier uh, on monic quadratic trinomials and how to factorize these. These are the non-monic ones. All right, factorizing non-monics. Now, an expression in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c is a quadratic trinomial. It's a special type of algebraic expression. And it's called a quadratic trinomial because, well, there's three terms there. And when we factorize it, there's four terms in the brackets there. But uh, that's beside the point, kind of. An example in this case is a 6x squared plus 13x plus 5. We're going to have a look at this as our key example here. And... Um, we can sort of label the numbers on this uh, on this algebraic expression. That front number in front of the x we'll call uh, a. The number in front of the uh, x, sorry the x squared is a. The number in front of the x is a is we call b in this case 13. And the number on its own at the end we call c just for kind of reference uh, referencing this expression. Now if that front number is a 1 which we saw in the previous video we call it a monic quadratic trinomial but this number isn't a 1 it's a 6 <laughs> so it's, when it's not a 1 we call the expression a non-monic quadratic trinomial. Boy decent name that one but still let's have a look at how uh, non-monic quadratic trinomials the factorizing of those differ from the monic ones. Let's have a look. So when we're factorizing this we're looking for two numbers that fit into the brackets and often we'll have in these non-monic uh, quadratic trinomials we'll have numbers in front of the x uh, that we don't normally have in the in the monic ones but let's have a look we look for, look for two numbers that go in and complete the brackets here now there's something slightly different to this in the previous uh, example in the monic quadratic trinomials we just looked for the 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 end number for our product of the two numbers that will go into the brackets now is a little bit more complicated let's have a look the uh, the two numbers in this case will have a uh, have a product of the front number the a number there the six and the five so we've got to multiply the front number six by the end number five to get that number that um, that ha uh, uses as our product for the the two numbers that go into the brackets sounds like a jumble but still. <laughs> so the product of those two numbers that we're going to put in those brackets will have a product this time of 30 not just 5. So if you've got a number out the front it's got to multiply by the, the C number at the end there. So it's got a product of 30 and it's got to add together to give 13 in the normal way from our monic ones. So the difference here is uh, for our product number we have to do that times that to get our 30. Okay, so we've got a sum of 30. Now, once again, we'll have a list of factors. This is our PSF method on the top right-hand corner here. So let's see how that works. Let's list our factors of 30. 1 and 30, 2 and 15. There's also 3 and 10, and 6 and 5, 5 and 6. So if you stare at that long enough, we need two numbers from this list of pairs that will have a product of 30. We've already taken care of that by listing the factors. They wouldn't get a Guernsey in the list here if they didn't uh, multiply together to give 30. But which pair here goes together well to add together to give 13? And I think you can spot that 3 and 10 might work very nicely there. Okay, so we'll pick 3 and 10 as our pair. Now what we do here, we've got to do a little bit of a more complicated move here. We need to split this middle term. This 13x, we're going to express it as a combination of 3x and 10x. Where did I get that from? Well, we've got our factors of 3 and 10 over here. We're going to put an x next to these, and we're going to uh, do a process called splitting the middle term. Now, this is only one way of solving these non-monic non quadratic trinomials. There's other methods as well, so uh, feel free to explore those if you like. But we're going to split the middle term here, and I'm going to do that so that I can create a situation where I can factorize in pairs, and that's another fa another video that we've uh, we've already recorded, so you could have a look at that if you like. So if we split this middle term, we're going to keep our 6x squared from the original expression. I'm going to split that 13x up into 3x and 10x uh, and sort of insert it in the middle there. Now I chose this uh, specifically here. I chose to put the 3x next to the 6x squared because what I'm just about to do is to factorize the first pair and then factorize the second pair. And I think you can see that 3 will factorize nicely with 6 whereas 10 goes better with the 5 over there. So that's a bit of an art form. It doesn't really matter. It'll still work out. But um, if you can place these two split versions um, strategically, the question will go more smoothly for you. 
Okay, so then what we'll do is factorise in pairs. We'll just uh, forget that it's come from a factorising of non-monic quadratic trinomials and just pretend it's uh, just a factorising in pairs question from the start here. We'll have a look to see the uh, common factors from the first pair of numbers here. 3x can come out of 6x squared plus 3x. That's our biggest common factor there. So what do we not got to multiply 3x by to get 6x squared? We need a 2x. So we're just factorising those first pair there. 3x times 2x will give us 6x squared. 3x times 1 will give us our, our 3x. So that's factorised our first pair. Let's have a look what can come out of our second pair. 5 goes into 10x and 5 and we need to multiply that by 2x plus 1. Now a magical thing happens. Have a look at the brackets here. They're identical to each other and if you watched the previous factorising in pairs video you'll know that we can do a special move here to finalise this. We can collect the front two numbers in their own bracket and just list the 2x plus 1 bracket once after it. So have a look at that previous video if you're not sure what I did there but you're allowed to if the brackets are the same same here, here and here, you're allowed to collect the front numbers in their own bracket and list the second bracket uh, beside it. Okay, quite a move there, wasn't it? We uh, had a bit of a twist on the product of the two numbers that go into here and here. The product of those two numbers needed to be a combination of the 6 and the 5 in these non-monic quadratics, uh, not, just the, not just the end number there. So that, but we still go through the listing of factors and somewhere in those list of factors, even if we have to play with the minuses and the pluses, there should be a combination that multiplies together to give the top number and adds together to give the, uh, the sum, in this case 13. Alright, so we can always uh, expand that if we want to and check that that's um, a, a correct factorised version of 6x squared plus 13 x plus 5, or we expand that like we would normally with binomial products, we do create our original expression, which is always reassuring. If you've got five minutes at the end of a test, that's a good thing to do, to expand any factorizings and see if you get back to the original expression. Okay, so uh, just a couple of key points here. We call it a non-monic quadratic trinomial if that front number is not 1, and we uh, we tweak it by uh, just adjusting how we read off the number that we need as our product of the two numbers that go into the brackets and we need to include the front number and the end number in our multiplication there to find the product. And we split the middle term strategically. You'll get better at that with a bit of practice but we split that middle term in order to set up a, a fairly straightforward um, factorising in pairs scenario there. That's the way I like to do it anyway. Other people do a cross method or uh, another method with a big long massive fraction but uh, that's up to them. So anyway that's my method of factorising non-monic quadratic trinomials. Quite a mouthful and quite a process. There's a few steps there but once you get enough practice you'll be fine I'm sure. PeterBlakeMaths.com. Thanks for listening.